Hey guys, how's it going? GovKid Method here, and I'm actually up at my parents' place. They live on the lake, and so I decided to do a different style video to kind of take you guys outside. Um, get an early start to the weekend here, spending some time on the lake. And I had this idea for a video, which was uh, basically a question that I've been getting a lot. One of the main questions I've been getting lately is, you know, hey GovKid, I'm registered. What do I do now? You know, there's so much information. I've heard of a bunch of different things that I could do. Give me some, you know, tangible, practical next steps. Now that I'm registered, things that I can actually start doing to make progress towards, you know, winning that government contract. That's what everybody's kind of going for, for that goal. So um, I always say there are three pillars. It's registering, marketing, and bidding. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some tangible things in terms of marketing and bidding that you can start doing as soon as you've registered your GovCon business. Okay, so let's get started with marketing. The first thing that I wanna talk about with marketing, since so many things build on it, is your capability statement. If you don't know what it is or you don't have it, a capability statement is essentially your company's one pager that gets your foot in the door and is really a good introduction to a government contracting officer or a small business representative or a liaison at an OSDABU that you can use to introduce the goods and services that your business is gonna to sell to the government. You know, this one pager is gonna have your NAICS codes. It's gonna have your past performances. It's gonna have a company summary about what your company actually does. You know, just, just kind of like a snapshot, an overview. It's gonna talk about the core competencies, the things that your company actually can provide to the government in detail, as well as those key, you know, business information type things like your cage code, your DUNS number, and of course your point of contact information so that a government customer could reach out to you if they were interested. When you want to start marketing, the first thing that you really need is this capability statement. So I urge you to get that before you take any of these next steps. Okay, next, so once you have your capability statement, one thing you can start doing is responding to source of sought market research on beta.sam. This is something you can start doing right away. So assuming you already know what your target government agencies are, and if not, I did a video earlier today showing you how to actually identify the agencies that buy the most of the NAICS codes that you've selected for your business. So go check that out if you haven't, if you have that question. But once you know the agencies you wanna go after, you can go into beta.sam, contract opportunities and start looking at the filter that you have on the left side of the screen which is notice type you can look for different notice types like pre-solicitation solicitations awards or sources sought i want you to look at those sources sought that's the first stage of the four stages of a bid and it's really the government saying hey we have this bid coming out in the future who would be interested by responding to that source of sought with your company's capability statement, maybe answering a few questions, it throws your hat in the ring and it lets the agency know that you're trying to target that, hey, you know, you're a player in the space and you're interested in bidding on this requirement in the future, but it's just another way to market your business, let them know that you exist and let them know that this is the type of work that you can perform if say they have something else coming up in the future or they have a contracting officer who's looking for a good company, they could keep you in mind. It's just a way to market your business by responding to that source of sought market research and also gearing your up to bid on that requirement in the future. So you really, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone.
Okay, another thing you can start doing right away for marketing is setting up a capability briefing, which is a one-on-one -on -one session, either in person or over the phone with an Oztaboo at your target agency. So every agency, every base kind of has this office of small disadvantaged underutilized businesses. So it's really a small business office. It's not the SBA, but it is a small business office and all the government agencies have them. And their whole mission in life is to meet with new government contractors to learn the goods and services that they want to sell to the government and share with them, you know, maybe some forecasts or some opportunities. Just let them know the things that that particular agency is looking to buy. So this is a mutually beneficial conversation. And they'll also give you some feedback on your capability statement and your SAM registration, stuff like that. You can ask those type of questions. Those are basic. I really like to use it as forming a relationship and you want to seem as knowledgeable and experienced as possible when you go into this meeting so that you can just try and get the most out of this marketing session to let them know, you know, you're a real player. You're here to win some contracts and, you know, and that you're going to be active trying to win business with their agency and they're going to start seeing you again and again and again. Okay, now that you know a few things that you can do for marketing, now you gotta also start bidding. And this is just a numbers game. You gotta start putting out proposals. You gotta learn how to do this. So again, you're gonna to go to beta.sam.gov and look in contract opportunities and go back to that notice type in terms of a filter on the left. Instead of looking at source of sought market research, you're gonna be looking at those solicitations and com combined synopsis solicitations. These are bids. These are live active bids that if you respond to them, you could actually receive a award from. You can't receive an award typically from a source of salt market research. You're gonna just you know market and plug your company by responding to that. You also wanna do this, which is responding to bids, those solicitations and combined synopsis solicitations. Find those agencies that you're looking to target and then you know whatever niche, whatever industry you're in for your GovCon business, start putting bids together. You're gonna to basically be seeing two types of bids. You're gonna be seeing a RFP and an RFQ. An RFP is a request for proposal. This typically means they're gonna want you to put together, you know, maybe a lengthy, maybe a short proposal, but they are gonna want some specific things. What do you put in a proposal? You have to read the solicitation, it tells you. Don't start with a blank sheet of paper. You have to learn to read before you can learn to write for a government proposal. It's not terribly as difficult as you think it is, but you just have to basically create an outline based off of what they're telling you they want and then just fill in those sections, give them what they want. Do they want resumes? Do they want a management plan? Read for it, look for it. The section in that is called the instruction to offerers. Find the instruction to offerers in an RFP and you're going to find the instructions that you need to put your proposal together. You can do it, you don't have to hire some outside proposal writer, you don't need that. So in this RFP, aside from the proposal, they're gonna want your pricing. So obviously follow the instructions for the pricing as well, how they want you to break out your price. That's an RFP. Now there's an RFQ, which is a request for quote. This means they're primarily gonna want you to give them pricing. Maybe answer a few questions, provide a bit of information, but primarily this is gonna be pricing that they want. It's typically you know, shorter, simpler, and to the point, they just wanna you know, see who has the lowest price. Now that brings me to you know, the next thing here, which is evaluation factors. You need to know this with bidding as well. There's two primary evaluation factors that government contracting officers and agencies use to decide, hey, who's going to win this bid? 10 people responded, who's gonna win? There's two primary things that they do. It's either going to be a lowest price, technically acceptable award, or it's gonna be a, a best value or some sort of best value price trade-off. Um, so let me tell you what those mean. Lowest price, technically acceptable, you guessed it, lowest price bidder wins. So as long as they have found to be technically acceptable, the company with the lowest price is going to win the bid. It makes it very easy. So if you can find that evaluation factor within the solicitation before you even bid on it, you can say, okay, you know, I need to be lowest price to even stand a chance at winning this. So I need to not have a lot of, you know, fat in my margins, 
Maybe I need to get a couple different quotes to get a lower price to mix it up a little bit. Whatever you can to be in the, the lower competitive range to try and be the lowest price on this. That's going to be your strategy. The government will often use this strategy for those RFQs, those requests for quotes that we talked about because they're really just interested in the price. Maybe this is a commodity item or a commodity service, something they're not really worried about a company screwing up um, so they can go this route. Now in RFP, you're more likely to see you know, a best value type evaluation, which means, hey, you don't necessarily have to have the lowest price. We're looking for a company that has some experience. We want some past performance. Maybe we want you to write specifically to your approach at how you're going to accomplish this. And maybe you know a company that has a better approach than another company that could be weighted differently to you know be equally as important as price so that means the company that automatically has the lowest price is not going to win the company with the best value essentially that's going to be given to the government by choosing this contractor is going to win the award instead you'll see that more often with rfps and you'll see uh, lowest price more often with rfqs so guys that's marketing and a little bit about bidding. So if you wanted some practical steps now that you're registered that you can start doing, you wanna get your capability statement together, you wanna to start responding to those source of stock market research. You also wanna set up those one-on-one -on -one capability briefings with those Oztaboo small business reps and liaisons at your agencies, but you also need to start playing the numbers game. You can't get away from it. You gotta start putting those proposals out. You gotta start bidding. Maybe you're gonna win you know, one out of 10, one out of 20 doesn't matter once you start bidding there's one more thing that i want to let you know that i almost forgot if you request a proposal debrief within 72 hours of finding out who awarded the contracting officer is obligated to hop on a phone call with you and walk through your proposal with you and discuss the inadequacies of your proposal and also what did you do well that way you can take those notes and beef up your proposal and then respond to the next one and then if you don't win request another proposal debrief, beef it up again, get more feedback, keep getting better and better, start responding to a lot of the opportunities out of the same agencies. Don't just be random on all over the place. They're gonna get to see that you're trying to earn their business. You're taking their feedback and you're making your proposals better. Eventually, you're going to start winning contracts and this is just the hard work approach, the GovKid method, whatever you wanna call it. I kinda call it my method, but it really is just the hard work approach and you will start winning contracts and you're gonna be marketing, so they're gonna start feeding you some work once they start to know, like, and trust you as a contractor and know you in the space. In no time, you're gonna start, you know, getting more contracts than maybe you know what to do with, or maybe just one or two. It depends on how aggressive you're gonna be, it depends on your space, it depends on a lot of things, but these are some practical things that you can start doing once you're registered to start winning government contracts, okay? So I hope you found these to be helpful and very specific and literal steps that you can actually do. So I don't wanna hear you saying, I don't know what to do. This is what you should do, okay? So if you like GovCon related videos, consider subscribing to my channel because that's all that I do. If you like this video, you found it helpful, consider hitting that like button as well. And if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, add those to the comment section and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,